Hey guys, so I got to round 100 on every Chronicles map in Black Ops 3 Zombies. And there's a reason why it's one of the best selling DLC in Call of Duty history, because it's just good, to be honest. The difference between Black Ops 3 and the original games isn't so much that it ruins the maps, but it just makes it more fresh to play and a lot more fun in a lot of areas because of gobble gums and things like that. But to me, ever since Nocturne and Toten, the purpose of Zombies has always been to survive and to get to high rounds. That's always where I get the fun out of. And some of these maps, are definitely easier than the originals, I would say most. And this might be controversial, but some of these maps, I, <laughs> I would say they're actually harder than the originals. And I'm gonna say that two of these maps in the Chronicles are the hardest maps I've ever gotten to round 100 on, ever. I just wanna clarify, two of these maps are the hardest maps I've ever gotten to round 100. There's still a lot of maps in Zombies history I haven't done, so this could easily change. And I, by the way, I was only using classic Gobble Gums because Mega Gobble Gums Borderline is on it's borderlining cheating, I would say. But hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. I got to round 100 on Nocturne Tone, Verrucked, Shinonuma, Kino de Tone, Ascension, Shangri-La, Moon, and Origins. So hopefully you guys do enjoy. Okay, so we're going to start with Nocturne Toten, and I always grab the Shiva straight away because this map may be the slowest map I have ever played. It was slower than Advanced Warfare, and that took me 13 hours to get to round 100. So I don't want to spoil how long this took, but I want to go over it pretty fast because it's pretty simple. And so one of the first things I always do is grab a gobble gun, better be safe than sorry. And then at the start of round four, I make my way to grab the Cuda in the box room and try and get the Ray Gun Mark II and the Thunder Gun. But first I build up my points using the Cuda. This is all very slow and boring, so I'm gonna just skip right through it. Like I said, this map is very slow. Now I had bad luck with the mystery box. So at round nine, I make my way up the stairs. I deliberately open this chair in the stairs. I don't wanna open the other chair on the other staircase. Case. From the Wonder Fizz machine, which thank God is on this map, I get Juggernog, and then I get Double Tap, then I get Quick Revive, and then of course Stamina Up. So they're my four perks that I get. I just want to say this, I really do enjoy how there's perks and a Thunder Gun and a Ray Gun Mark II on this map, but I really like the original Noct. I actually think it's a bit of a hidden gem. You know, you got a flamethrower, and just it plays so differently to the Chronicles version, which makes the Chronicles version fresh to play. But I, uh, this is the only time I'm going to be negative in this whole video, but I actually prefer the original World of War Noct. I find it's a hidden gem, as I just said. And of course, it's not so goddamn slow. It took me like three hours to get round 100 on World of War Noct. I then get the Thunder Gun at round 15, which is pretty damn fast to get the Thunder Gun. It's kind of rare. So one of the biggest things I learned from playing Chronicles is that Wonder Weapons definitely have a different rate at which they come out on different maps. On Noct, it takes a while to get the Thunder Gun and the Ray Gun Mark II, but I do get the Ray Gun Mark II finally at round 18, and then immediately after that, I get the Monkey Bombs, which is great. I then spend the early rounds in this box room just using the Ray Gun Mark II. Most of this is simply just waiting for the zombies because they take so long to spawn in. By round 40, I just start using my Thunder Gun to save ammo, and I nearly actually go down here because round 40 to about round 50 is kind of the awkward stage where the spawns are a bit slower, so it kind of just like scatters the zombies a little bit and makes things awkward at times. I'd actually rather train the zombies at round 90 than round 40. At round 60, I start to run out of ammo. And so I hit the gobble gun machine to try and get an alchemical antithesis. I even use my points to do so and I don't get one. And so this means I need to trade out my thunder gun unless I can get a max ammo of my final shot, which of course I don't. So now I have to trade out my thunder gun and try and get it back from the box. And hence why this takes so long to get to round 100 other than the fact that the zombies take about a year to get into the map anyway. And of course, it can take about an hour to actually get the Thunder Gun back. So you can imagine how happy I was whenever I saw the Thunder Gun in the mystery box. I even do a little spin 360 with my sniper here because I think this did legit take an hour to get it back the first time. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to take forever to get to round 100 and it, it did when i did get an insta kill or a death machine i would go into the first room to try and maximize how many kills i could get to speed up the rounds but man it is pretty risky especially when you're using a mark ii without a speed caller so i nearly do go down here bit risky this map is very safe though 
because it is so slow. I'm sorry I've said slow a hundred times already, but if there was a definition for the Chronicles version of Noct, I think it would simply just say slow. At round 88 here, I definitely would have gone down if I didn't have in plain sight. That was very clutch to have that. And then I do spam the crap out of these zombies. And you might think why? Because I need as many points as I can get to get as many alchemical antithesis as I can get. So then I don't have to do as many trades with the thunder gun in the box. Now, if there was anything that was the equivalent to a slap in the face in zombies, it's when you finally get the thunder gun back and the first shot of the thunder gun, you get a max ammo, which means that you're not gonna get a max ammo for ages again. And all you're gonna get is one shot saved, which is such a pain. <laughs> Okay, so finally we're at round 99, and if you didn't know what the strategy was, I didn't really explain it in this part. It's literally just running around in this room here. It's very simple, but as you can see, I do get a red screen at round 99, and if I went down on this map, it is really hard to get your perks back, especially at these high rounds, so I probably would have lost. So that was very lucky. That's twice now in plain sight has saved my life. And so out of the 17 hours that it took me to get to round 100, this strategy here, just running around in this room with the thunder gun and using my SMG to get points so then I can get more gobble gums, I only got trapped like three times in like 17 hours. And so yeah, of course I used my thunder gun to kill the horde. And then here, you can see I only have one shot left with my thunder gun, but I have 515,000 points from using my CUDA all the time that I can hit the gobblegum machine on round 99 <laughs> using 512,000 points. And I'm trying to get alchemical, but of course I get in plain sight and then I get blocked off at this point. And this is kind of scary, man. I don't think I had a worse kind of situation. And of course it happens at round 99. So I just have to train the zombies. And so I do get boxed in here. I have to use my thunder gun. I don't get a max ammo which means I'm going to have to do another trade out. But as you can see, I only have 3,410 points. So I'm going to have to use my CUDA a lot here to get a lot more points and have to pray to get a thunder gun really quick here. And so I'm actually going to speed up this bit here so you can see just what it looks like to actually do a trade of the thunder gun. You know, sometimes it can take literally an hour to get the thunder gun. Sometimes it takes three hits. It's really RNG based. And there literally was someone who got to round 255 on knocked. This took me 17 hours to get to round 100. Imagine how long it takes to get to 255. But finally, I do get the thunder gun here. It only took, I think, about seven hits there of the box, which is pretty damn good. And you could see I was always getting points with the weapons I got out of the box. So then I never ran out of points there. And then boom, round 100, maybe one of the most satisfying round 100s. Literally, I got it first go though. So it took me 17 hours. I had my PC on for 36 hours. I had 30,000 kills, but it only took me one go. So it actually, in hindsight, took faster than a lot of these other round 100s, which were really hard because I would fail and then have to restart. Now time to move on to my most cursed map, Verrucked. As you can see, I have Juggernog and I'm using the Raygun Mark II Insta down. When you run through a trap, there's a chance that you will just go down. If you slide through, I'm pretty sure that's how you counter that. The amount of blank shots you get with the one off at high rounds makes it incredibly risky just to use it. And then there's a massive glitch where <laughs> if you get a red screen and use the wonder off, the red screen won't go away. And so every time you use the wonder off, it like sustains the red screen. So this red screen lasts about 20 seconds or something like that. And so I go down in this situation, which really sucks. Even at times when I thought I was on track to beat the speed run world record for this map, I got to round 67 without even opening the speed caller door, which means I'm right on track for that round 100 speed run world record. <laughs> in the next 10 rounds, I go down because I run through the trap. And that's what I learned that you had to slide through the trap to minimize your risk of dying when running through it. Because I died quite a few times just running through the trap. And it's just so random. It's so frustrating. So if you didn't know, Varukt actually has two different spawn locations. One on the Mule Kick side and one on the Juggernog side. If I spawned on the Mule Kick side, I would just restart my game to spawn on the Juggernog side. I then use the RK5 to get to round 5, which gives me enough points to open the doors to the Speed Collar room. So first I hit the Gobble Gun Machine, open this door, then turn to my left, open the next door, and then get into the Power Room turn on the power and then make my way into the speed caller room and I don't open the speed caller door. That's so important. Otherwise this will take 
about 12 hours to get to round 100. And I'm actually going to spoil this. I have the second fastest round 100 with classic gobble gums on Varrocked, which is pretty cool to have. I didn't beat the speed run world record. That's like an hour in front. And I guess that shows that not many people have gotten to round 100 on Varrocked. And I think that's due to the fact that the strategy I used for this game was only found like three years ago and this game came out for like five. Not to mention that this map's just very, very hard. I said the definition of Chronicles Noct would be slow. I would say the definition for this map would be hard. With the HPK I brought off the wall, I get enough points to get speed caller, and then I continue to camp in this room until round 13, where I then hit the gobblegum machine and the mystery box. First hit of the mystery box, I get the Wonder Wolf. And the Wonder Wolf is so common on this map, it's actually ridiculous. That's the only saving grace of this map. And when I say saving grace, I mean the only thing that makes it easier. I think it's a great map. I think it's very skillful and fun in a lot of ways. But the map is brutally hard. As you see, I get two red screens in the span of 30 seconds. Not so much the game's fault other than me sucking right there though. I then get stamina up from the Wonder Fizz machine and then hit the mystery box and get a teddy bear. So whenever I got a teddy bear, I would always make my way down to get Juggernog and Quick Revive because I want wanted to beat the speed run world record on this map or at least come second i got second so i'm happy with that but that's why i'm explaining that every single thing i did was calculated to try and pick up the speed and at round 17 i get the ray gun mark 2 also very common on this map the only thing that's not common is maybe the monkey bomb but the ray gun mark 2 will also speed up the rounds a lot the early rounds i just use it in this speed caller room just spam the crap out of it and it's a lot faster than waiting for the zombies to spawn in and then use the wonder wolf also i just want to point out that if you are in the speed caller room and you have the door behind you shut they only come from those two windows that i'm shooting at so it speeds up the rounds a lot from round 25 plus though the ray gun mark Mark II gets a little weak for how fast the spawns are in this area. So I start using the Wonder Wolf a lot. But at the end of the rounds, I'd use the Raygun Mark II just to get the power-ups because you can't get any power-ups from the Wonder Wolf. At the end of every round, I would go to the Gobble Gun Machine and hit it just so by the time I use both of my Alchemical Antithesis, I will have another Alchemical Antithesis. Speaking of which, I would always use just before I ran out of ammo and would spam at these windows here. I would try and do it at the start of a round as well because when you use an Alchemical Antithesis on this map, you can literally get through a whole round because of the spawns are that quick in this section. Now you can stay here to round 67 like I showed you earlier, but it gets really, really hard and I wouldn't recommend it at all. And this is probably the best example why if you get a blank shot like I just did then, but there's more zombies around you, you're just dead. I even get trapped a little bit by getting a blank shot from the zombies who are pretty far away from me. Also, you can see I'm knifing to cancel my reload. It just speeds up your reload time significantly. It does cancel the reload, but it actually counts as a reload. So it shortens your reload, I should actually say. At round 53, I do open the speed collar door. Now, usually I'd wait till around 65 until I opened it, but it, there's such a high chance that you're going to go down by then that I just decided to open it nice and early at round 53. It does slow down the round 100 quite a bit, but I'd rather actually get to round 100 than to continually fail at like round 58, round 60, round 63. Okay, so I'm going to go over the high round strategy for Viroct, and it is kind of complicated, but I'm going to try my best to explain it and for it to make sense. So I'm going to start this round, round 75, in this room because this trap's already going off. I hit the gobble gun machine at the start of every round, because if you run out of ammo with the Wonder Wolf, you are literally dead on this map. And so you always want to have an alchemical antithesis on you, or if you don't have that in plain sight or anywhere but here. But once I get to the kitchen, I then turn around and walk slowly to get some points. I'm going to be using two traps in this strategy. And the trap I'm going to right now, I'm going to call that trap two. And the one that I was already going off, I'm going to call that trap one. For these traps, it's really important to note that if you stand right next to the trap like this, the zombies won't be able to hit you which is awesome. If this wasn't a thing, this map would be ridiculous to get to round 100. So if you stand on this trap here, the zombies coming in from that window on my right won't be able to kill me because they'll actually run into that electricity, which is really lucky. Once the trap ends, you gotta be very careful. You wanna run straight through that door. Sometimes you'll be able to run without using the Wonder Wolf. Sometimes you won't. That time I had to use two shots, which isn't very good, um, but it's better than going down, of course. After that trap ends, I run straight to the kitchen and then run to the speed caller room. I do a loop here, which makes it so more zombies will spawn in the speed caller area rather than closer towards the trap and then block me. And then also it makes it so by the time I get to the trap, I'm able to activate it. The traps have a cooldown of 60 seconds and they last for 40 seconds each time. With this 
trap, once the horde's dead that was behind you, you want to slide straight back through because there's two windows at this trap. And so if you stay any longer than like five seconds in this area, you're going to die. So you slide back through and then you make your way to the second trap again. But you have 60 seconds to get there from when it last was activated. So I take my time, I get points. And that's pretty much what the strategy is. You go from trap to trap and in between you get a bunch of points. So then you can actually afford those traps. And when you state it like that, the map sounds about 100 times easier than it really is. Now at round 86, I had this really weird moment where I saw a skeleton on a wheelchair with a white hat. I don't know if that's even in the original map. I, I've never seen it before. It was super random. Now, when I do get an alchemical antithesis and I am low on ammo, I usually use it in the kitchen on Verukt or Verukt. I, I don't know how you actually pronounce it. I pronounce it Verukt, but let me know in the comments what you think is the right way to pronounce it. I was listening to a German guy play it and he said Verukt. I don't know where the origin of the word comes from. I don't know why I'm ranting about this. But the bad thing about using it alchemical antithesis in this room is that sometimes this can happen and this was my first down and i did get that glitch where my red screen seemed to last forever and i missed my wonder Wolf shot i missed my wonder Wolf shot if you just miss one of them then you're dead and this is risky man so i've got no juggernaut if i go down here i go down i grab speed caller which definitely helps and i could have opened the barricade on the stairs but i didn't i i went the risky route and I'm going to go back and show you the exact moment where I died there. Now, if you look very closely here, I missed my shot. And like I said, if you miss one shot, you're dead. Luckily on this map, it's very easy to get Jug and then also Quick Revive back. They're just downstairs. It is a little bit more tricky to get back up to where you previously were on the second floor. Um, I nearly actually go down here, as you can see, and I just shoot behind myself. If I didn't shoot behind myself, then I probably would have downed. That's the one thing with the Wonder Wolf. You don't know where it's going to chain. At the end of the round, luckily, I leave the trap just when there's one zombie left, just so I can get stamina up back. This is not the easiest strategy without stamina up. So I finally get it back at the end of the round, which is perfect. Now, here's an example of how risky it is running through this door after the trap ends. And another example of why the Wolf is kind of confusing because you can't see where it's training with the electricity a lot of the times. Normally, all the zombies in the area will just stop still but look at that man holy crap <laughs> that was so close i forgot how close that was just by watching that again and then i'm taking my time i grab speed caller and i remember freaking out here if i go down around 97 i would have flipped out so i did actually open the barricade on that staircase there and i've never ever played this map with that barricade open that barricade's closed to speed up the rounds i believe um, and also just to like make it not as chaos in that area when you use the trap. So I was freaking out at the stage, but I did get stamina up back at the end of round 97. I did leave a loner zombie as well, which was perfect. I pretty quickly learned that just because that barricade was open on the stairs didn't make this area harder at all. <laughs> this situation here, I tried to slide and I crouched and I get a red screen at round 98. Jesus Christ. I don't know why I was just making everything so hard for myself <laughs> this game. Because I've got like two downs in the 90s and I got like the closest red screen. that I should have just used in plain sight straight away. But boom, we hit round 100. This is, I don't know. I think Shinonuma might be slightly harder than this map. But this map is bloody hard, man. This is my second hardest map and Shinonuma is the hardest. That's the map we're going to next. And at round 100, I did get Alchemical Antithesis. And I did want to see if I could do a whole round of round 100 using just two Alchemical Antithesis. And no, I couldn't. As you can see, I'm onto my second alchemical antithesis here. And then I run out of ammo with that. And then I run out of ammo. So I didn't have enough ammo to get through round 100 with the Wonder Wolf with two alchemical antithesis, which I thought was pretty interesting, to be honest. I do have some bit of fun training. It's funny. Once you get to round 100, for some reason, you like are good <laughs> at the game. But when you're on round 93 and 96, you suck at the game and you'll just go down to the dumbest ways. Um, and then I just kind of backed myself in a corner just for a bit of fun. Boom, round 100 for Arct. I was so happy to see this done. Okay, so I know I said Shinonuma is the hardest map I've ever gotten to round 100, and I'm going to stick by that. And it's partly because it takes like two hours to get a game that you could actually properly play, because if Speedcaller or Juggernog or the Mystery Box goes to the Fishing Hut, and I'll show what I mean later, I have to restart. So I restart there, and now I just want to go over one of my worst fails on this map. So I go down at round 96. Now the trap at round 52 plus on this map actually disappears. So you can't see when it's active, but you could hear it. And this is because of the fog on the map. There's too many effects going on. But here is where it gets really rough. So I run around these zombies here and I'll get hit twice. I get hit twice. I think I'm safe. 
boom. There must have been a zombie to my left there, otherwise there was a ghost that hit me. And as I said, this map is just full of restarts. So here, I get Mule Kick, which means Juggernog is probably at the fishing hut. So I restart my game, and this is finally the game that I get round 100. Now, first of all, I just want to say this. I actually think this map is harder than the original. This is one of those maps in the Chronicles that actually is. Uh, I do grab the Shiva here, and I use the Thermal Scope, by the way, just because this map is super green, and it just helps you see the zombies a lot better. Now, I summarized the Chronicles versions of Noct and Varukt with one word each. Noct was slow, Varukt was hard. I'm gonna say Sheena Numa. The one word to define it is just restart because you just have to restart so often. But finally I got a good game and I didn't have to restart and I finally got round 100 on this map. And I'm stating that again because there was a point where I literally thought maybe this map was too hard for me to get to round 100. But I persevered and from failing so much I knew that from round five at the very start, very similar to Varukt in a way, I would open up the map. So first I would go to this hut. This is the common room hut and I get Juggernog, which is perfect. So there's four huts on this map and the fishing hut is the one where you don't want Juggernog or Speed Caller to go. You need that close. So now I go to the storage hut and I want to get Speed Caller. Unfortunately, I don't. I actually get double tap, but that's fine. I still have one more hut and in this hut, I need to get Speed Caller. I don't think I even mentioned that. Yes, the perks are random on this map which makes this completely RNG based. But thank God I did get speed caller. Now I just have to hope that the mystery box doesn't go to the fishing hut. I then grab Juggernog at round seven and also speed caller. Now there are dogs on this map, so that makes it a little bit easier and Varukt in that sense, but I still think the map is harder, even with dogs. I then grab stamina up from the Wonder Fizz machine and then start hitting the mystery box. I'm trying to get the Ray Gun Mark II and the Wonder Wolf, but they're really rare on this map to the point that the mystery box usually ends up in the fishing hut and then you have to restart. Luckily here, I get the Ray Gun Mark II at round 11, and then I get the Wonder Wolf at round 12, which is very early to get both, which is absolutely awesome. So for the low rounds, I just use the Wonder Wolf in the storage hut, just like this, and use the trap whenever I'm able to activate it. Once I've hit the trap, I then use the Ray Gun Mark II to get all the power-ups and also to save one wolf ammo. There's only two windows in this hut and the trap kills all the zombies trying to come in. By round 52, we're still doing the exact same strategy and you can see I'm using the knife strategy to cancel my reloads. I have two shots on my one wolf, so I use the alchemical. And if you actually look closely, there is no electricity coming out of my one wolf now. So yes, <laughs> There is a thing at round 52 where electricity on the map just disappears. It still works, but like I said before, with the mist on the map, it just makes it disappear. So the trap there, it's working, but the electricity is just, you can't see it. So I'm just going to show you exactly what I mean. So I run through the trap and I get zapped when there was no electricity because the trap was actually on. I always hit the gobble gun machine, by the way, at the end of every round, just to make sure I get alchemical antithesis as fast as possible. Honestly, if they never added alchemical antithesis into Black Ops 3 zombies, it would be way different. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the high round strategy on Shinonuma. So I go to the common room hut at the start of the round because the storage room hut trap was cooling down. I use the trap in this hut and then train the zombies around. By the time the trap's about to end, that's when I leave. This time I couldn't leave. It was a bit awkward. So I had to do another loop around the hut and then I left. By that time, the trap was over. So all the zombies that were behind me didn't die. So that was a bit of a mistake. I then make my way to the second trap of the strategy, which is going to be the flogger trap. I really take my time so all the zombies are right behind me and I do a few loops just to gather them up so there's not any weird spacing or anything. I then use the flogger trap and then lay under it. This is kind of risky but I enjoy doing it this way because I always feel like I'm getting more kills out of it. As the zombies come towards me I back away and then as there's no zombies I go forward so the zombies behind me don't hit me. When I feel like the flogger is about to end, I then get up. And as you can see, sometimes there's a lot of zombies that will be there. I nearly go down there. That was kind of risky. But now I'm making my way to the third trap, which is in the storage hut. I use the trap, train the zombies. It is a tight hut, like I said earlier. But when I felt like the trap was about to end, I would then run through it. I would stick to the left side of the trap because usually there's less zombies on that side. And all the zombies that I trained in the hut behind me all die to the trap. And now I make my way back to the flogger trap. Again, I do this slowly. I initiate the flogger trap and then go back under it and repeat the process. So whenever I did get an alchemical antithesis, I would use it in the storage room. But it is super risky to use it, but it also speeds up the rounds so much that I think it's worth it. Now you'll see I do get a red screen in like a millisecond. You've really got to watch both your sides and you've got to be very careful you don't get a blank shot. It's just like Varukt. If you miss a single shot, 
you are literally dead. You might have a little bit more time on this map. Now here at round 90, I get my first down and I put this down to sheer just cockiness. I was at round 90, no downs. And at this point, you know, you're about seven hours in and you're just kind of getting a bit more fatigued. You get a bit lazy. You're like, oh, I haven't gone down yet. I'll be fine. I stayed under this trap for so long. This is the most risky trap by far. Because you can actually still get hit by the zombies when you're down here. That's why I'm moving back and forth. Trying to like get away from the zombies so the flogger can hit them. But I was under the trap so long that the flogger ended. And the zombies literally came up behind me and hit me. Now I said Varrock's saving grace was that the wonder weapons were super easy to get. Well on Shinonuma, the one saving grace that makes the map a little bit easier is the fact that the perks are pretty easy to get on this map. So I go and I get Juggernog. First I use the com room hut trap. Just to be careful. And then I grab Juggernog. I always go for Juggernog first. I mean, who wouldn't if you're on round 90 on Shinonuma and about to fail? Although this map actually has quite a lot of area to it. A lot of it's just filled by swamps. And you can't run through them. But you can slide through them. So there's a little trick I learned. And I just did it right there. There's definitely something difficult about the 90s on Shinonuma and Varukt. I nearly go down again on round 92. Usually, I'm pretty much fine during the whole game. And then I get to the 90s and I start going down. It's pretty bizarre. Here, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> what the fuck? So you might have heard me laugh there. I'd actually forgotten that that even happened, to be honest. But I do remember when it did happen and I kind of freaked out for a second and then luckily I had it in plain sight. Otherwise, I literally would have died from the most random glitch that just like rocketed me like two feet up in the air. Seriously though, so lucky I had it in plain sight then. Otherwise, I probably would have broken my headset if I died to that. But the way I actually go down is even worse. I go, I try to go prone and I miss the button. And so I just walk into the trap at round 98. I've failed this map more than any map I've ever attempted to get to round 100. And I've done quite a lot of round 100s. So at this point, the floggers are going off. I have nowhere to go except for to train in this room. And I've never practiced training in this room except for on Ward at War Shinonuma. Because I've never had to train in this room with the flogger going off. So <laughs> just that's just to get you in my headspace at the time when I was doing this. Because I did did not want to restart because I'm going to be completely honest. If I failed this, it would have taken me a couple more days to get to round 100. And that's, you know, that's like a waste of time, man. Obviously, if the video is good, it's not a waste of time. But I just, you know what I'm saying? I, I clutch up. I go through the swamp. Thank God I knew that you could slide. If if I didn't slide through that swamp, I 100% would have died because I would have been just stuck in it. I then make my way to quick revive. And I remember thinking, I'm going to go to quick revive first because I still have three downs, so if I go down with Quick Revive, even if I don't have Jug, at least I can get back up and get another Quick Revive. That was my thought process, but like I said, and this is the saving grace of the map that makes it slightly easier, it's pretty easy to get your perks back. So all the zombies are behind me, I'm going to the com room, I'm going to get Jug, but I'm going to use the com room hut trap first and then grab Jug just to be safe. Once you get Jug, you're pretty much safe at this point, for the time being anyway. But finally, I hit round 100, I use the flogger to kill the last zombies, and you're going to see here in a sec, I do a crazy screen shake. You can see how happy I am. Honestly, out of every single thing I've done, like gaming related, I know that sounds super nerdy, but that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, getting round 100 in Shinonuma. And I actually got to round 101 because the next round was a dog round. You always want to get a dog round on round 98 or 99. So it really sucks when you get on 100, but at least I got to 101. Okay, so now we're past the difficulty of the World at War maps. And now we're onto the Black Ops 1 maps. And we're starting with Kino de Tone. And the best thing about being on Black Ops 1 is we have the pack of punch machine now so i go into the death corner where juggernaut is i have no ammo in my thunder gun all i have is jug and a vmp or dead wire it's crazy how good the ammo mods are on black ops 3 again if you took out ammo mods on black ops 3 this game wouldn't be nearly as easy as people claim it to be I somehow get out of that corner just because of ammo mods. So they did patch the fire trap strat and I didn't know that. So I, I ended up learning the hard way. At this point, I feel like everyone's gotten to round 20 at least on Kino de Tone. So I'm going to go over these early rounds really fast. I grab the RK5, I grab a gobble gum. I can see the mystery boxes towards the street side. I'm heading that way anyway. So that's absolutely perfect. I grab the VMP in the street. Now the street is where I'm going to be spending all of my game. The spawns are really fast here and no Nova crawlers can reach you here unless you make them spawn in the first room and drag them there and that's why i really like chronicles because the original black ops 1 is completely different when going for round 100 than the chronicles version it's a completely fresh thing i've gotten to round 100 on black ops 1 kino and it was a lot of fun so was the black ops 3 version i turn on the power i grab jug i then get back a bunch and you can see here i'm just kind of playing with the camera on the screen i love the theater room and then i grab speed caller I also grab stamina up and then start to build my points in the street with the Pack-a-Punch VMP. I then hit the mystery box trying to get the Thunder 
gun and i'm gonna be completely honest the thunder gun is a lot better than the wonder Wolf on black ops 3 and i get the thunder gun on my second hit of the box the thunder gun's pretty rare on this map so that was very lucky i pack a punch my thunder gun and now we're fully set up we can just have a bit of fun so for the early rounds i just train the zombies in the streets i always have my thunder gun out you guys know it's pretty much impossible to die with the thunder gun in your hand and so i would just half hoard the zombies to speed up the rounds because ammo is not that important in these lower rounds although it's pretty much impossible to go down if you have the thunder gun in hand if you get caught sprinting or reloading you definitely can and you don't need me to tell you that we've all gone down stupidly when using the thunder gun it doesn't make you invincible but it definitely makes it hard for you to go down one thing i learned about playing the black ops version of chronicles maps is that you get way more power-ups. I don't know if that's entirely true, but it seems like on World at War and Black Ops 2, you don't get near as many power-ups than you do on the Black Ops 1 Chronicles maps. Because I felt like I was getting an insta-kill every third or second round. And on these Black Ops 1 maps, the insta-kills... The death machines, they're so helpful in making these rounds go super fast and they're just super satisfying to use. And of course, like I've said on every other map, if I'm low on ammo, I pop an alchemical antithesis and it's actually really, really fun to use on this map because there's not much fear that you're going to go down. When you get a dog round, there's a little trick you can do where if you look towards the theater on the staircase, the dogs will just spam spawn in front of you so you can get through these dog rounds really quick. And if you look at my perks, you'll see that at round 67, I still don't have quick revive, so I do grab it now. I think I was just calm confident and that's why i didn't grab it until this stage and also if i go down at like round 60 i'll probably just reset anyway because 60 is not even really halfway and so you only have three more lives from there and if you're going down at 60 well chances are you're not going to make it to 100 for the high round strategy i would train up a full horde of zombies shoot them on the steps and then turn on the fire trap and then i don't have to do that until the fire trap has fully recharged after it's been used again and so for now i'd just train up the zombies try and do a full horde of zombies if i can't do a full horde of zombies zombies i would just do a half just whatever i could but i mean the street is a pretty big area as you can see and so it's not too bad like right there i kill a full horde of zombies and i have speed collar as well in case i miss a few zombies and i have to reload kino de Toten was the first map i actually got done for this video and i think i was actually a lot worse of a zombies player at the time i think i've improved a lot by doing the eight maps um so at this stage i do actually go down at round 74 i could have easily hit the gobble gun machine and tried to get it out chemical or just use my thunder gun more because i still had four shots in my thunder gun that was just a really bad down round 74 but honestly i feel like i have improved a lot from getting round 100 especially on shinanuma and Farakt, as you guys already saw and then shangri-la which is coming up even origins a little bit. i mean origins was just a lot of fun and so is moon i mean chronicles is great but you don't need me to tell you that so i still have four shots with my thunder gun now only three so it's pretty easy to get juggernaut back and then i use this trap here this is the death corner so you always need to use the trap otherwise you will die so i'm not sure how i made this mistake but i accidentally picked up deadshot daiquiri instead of stamina up in the wonder fizz machine stamina up is kind of like a yellow green and deadshot daiquiri is like a gray green but i do choose stamina up over getting speed caller so i get juggernaut dead shot stamina up and quick revive i know i said it's pretty much impossible to go down if you have the thunder gun in hand well that's true unless you suck like me i can clearly see those zombies are dropping down and i run straight into them and go down that was a really bad down as well i then re-grab juggernaut from the death spot i then grab stamina up properly this time and not dead shot i grab widow's wine though and i'm really glad i did i think that really helps and also quick revive in the 90s i started to run out of ammo a lot so i would go to this back side of the street next to the gate and train the zombies this strategy people do without widow's wine i have no idea how it is such a hard strategy but with widow's wine it's variable for me and i was very lucky that i did decide to grab it just kind of off a whim at the time and i still can't decide if widow's wine is an overpowered perk or not sometimes it does ruin strategies though so i don't know if you can really call it an overpowered perk if on some maps it actually sucks so let me know in the comments if you think widow's wine is overpowered because i think it depends on the map after playing chronicles i've kind of changed my mind on it i don't think it's as overpowered as i thought it was but here is a great example of how awkward it is just take note of how many times i'm getting hit and the space in between how many hits and in the end i get a really cool looking red screen to be honest and so this is going to be a throwback to where i said earlier this was my first game in the chronicles and i think i've improved a lot because this is also another terrible down i actually suck 
<laughs> zombies. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I should have used in plain sight here. I don't know why I thought that dead wire would just kill 20 zombies in front of me. It only kills like seven or eight. So <laughs> that was a terrible down as well. And of course it was at round 99. I then used the in plain sight that I should have used earlier to get to Juggernog in the death corner for one last time. I grabbed stamina up as well. And then I find myself realizing that it was the very end of the round anyway. I did have two more zombies left and I remember playing very, very careful to kill them because I had Jug and stamina up and no quick revive. Imagine dying at the very end to two last zombies. But we hit round 100. Kino was, I would define it in one word by saying it was just a classic. Now, just like Shinonuma, I got a dog round at round 100, which is very poor timing. But at least, again, round 101 Shinonuma, round 101 Kino to Toto. Half the map so far, I've gotten to round 101. Now we move on to the easiest map on Chronicles and that's Ascension. This map's so easy. I don't bother even grabbing Quick Revive. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to get you round 100 without going down once. Now, with the way I play zombies, these starts are really repetitive, so I'm just going to go over it really fast. I grab the RK5, I grab a Gobble Gum, and just like a lot of the other maps, I leave the spawn room at round 5. I head to the power room to restore the lack of color. I'm not sure why Ascension went with this start where there's a lack of color, but as soon as you turn on the power, the map is so saturated. It looks really nice for a couple seconds. The mystery box always spawns up here as well, so I grab the VMP and then Juggernog and then I get the Raygun Mark II at round 8 and Speed Caller at round 10. Whilst I'm at Speed Caller I then do the first part of the Backer Punch, call the platform and then it drives me back to the spawn room. I have to do this three times. You open the Packer Punch machine and send the rocket off. On my way to my second platform I grab Salmon Up and so I use my second platform and that's two down. Now this map is the first Chronicles map where things get a little bit more wild like you fly in the air and there's a rocket. Although on Kino Deton and Doris, you do teleport, so I guess that's pretty wild as well. I take my third and final lander, and this is back when zombies was really easy to pack a punch, so that's literally all I have to do. Black Ops 1 pack a punch systems were super easy compared to... <laughs> what happens in Black Ops 2. I then launched the missile and I could shoot the missile down with the Raygun Mark II, but I thought I'd be peaceful and just let it on its way. Pretty crazy that on a zombies map, you can launch a missile into the air. I would have loved to see people's reactions back in Black Ops 1 when they first launched the missile into the air. I couldn't imagine what it'd be like because zombies just wasn't crazy as it is now. With the Packer Punch open, I pack a punch the Raygun Mark II. And I'm going to keep it for as long as it kills the monkeys because if I run out of ammo with my Thunder Gun, I need something to kill them. Because the monkeys have a lot of health, especially in the high round. And they do a lot of damage. They're actually pretty strong. And if you haven't played Ascension, the monkey rounds are essentially just the dog rounds, but the monkey still perks. All I need now is the Thunder Gun. I do get the Gersh device now, which is just a very overpowered monkey bomb. And using the Gersh device, I get the Thunder Gun. I just distract the zombies with the Black Hole. But I do grab Widow's Wine, like I said, instead of Quick Revive. It's super overpowered on this map, especially with the Thunder Gun. And speaking of the Thunder Gun, I then pack a punch it. And this area here, you can actually get to round 100. This could be the high round strategy. People usually use it for the Black Ops 1 strategy because you can see the spawns are really quick. And I'm kind of just making the most of that whilst I'm here. But for Black Ops 3, seeing that you have Gobble Gums and you're not really going to run out of ammo that often until round 90, you can just camp in this spot here or we'll train the zombies. I camp for the early rounds in literally just spam my thunder gun back and forth and you can get through these rounds ridiculously fast just keep spamming the alchemical antithesis or the gobble gun machine i should say which is literally right behind you you don't have to move for like 90 rounds this is super overpowered again hence why it's just so bloody easy whenever i did get a death machine i would go to this corner here and face my crosshair in this exact position and this is one of the most satisfying things to do in zombies the only thing that would make it a bit more satisfying if i had an insta kill with the death machine although i would be lying if i didn't say it is a little bit gruesome up this close seeing all the blood everywhere once a death machine runs out you do have to be pretty careful but now i'm going to go over the second part of the strategy so the first part was me just camping in that position spamming the thunder gun back and forth that works up until around 60 but at round 60 you're going to have to start training the zombies and what i like to do at round 60 to about round 80 is you half train them so you do a little loop like this you go behind the zombies that are dropping down and then you shoot and then you just repeat so that's all i did from round 60 to round 80 just do it a half horde Super fun to do, super fun strategy, and also you never have to worry about ammo. At the start of every monkey round, I would turn this trap on here because it just kills a few monkeys. Because these monkeys have a lot of health and they're two shot kill with a thunder gun. And I got rid of my ray gun mark two at about round 70 because it just doesn't kill the monkeys. You'll run out of ammo before you kill the monkey with the ray gun mark two. So you just gotta be really careful that when you get to a monkey round, that you have something to kill it. So you need to make sure you have thunder gun ammo. Otherwise, you will die to the monkeys. So I said there was three stages 
to the strategy. The first stage was camping up until around 60. The second stage was killing half hordes from around 60 to 80. And the final stage was from 80 plus killing full hordes of zombies. And so I would train the zombies just randomly, to be honest, in this area. Without Widow's Wine, it is a lot harder and you'll waste a lot more ammo. But with Widow's Wine, you can kind of do whatever the hell you want in this area with the Thunder Gun. So I'd recommend to you, if you enjoy training zombies or you just want to get better at training zombies, play Ascension Black Ops 3 and do this strategy because it's not hard at all. But at the same time, you can do some pretty fun and cool stuff when training the zombies. If you have Widow's Wine like me, even if you get caught out doing or trying something, you won't go down because you have the Thunder Gun. And if you do want to get through these rounds as fast as possible, I'd recommend when you get low on ammo, use your Gershtavash so you don't have to waste an alchemical antithesis and then maybe fully run out of ammo. So I'd use a Gersh device to try and get a max ammo and then I'd, I'd use all three of them. Not to mention that the Gersh device is just awesome to use. I mean, it looks so cool when you just kill the zombies with it and it's quite pretty. This time, however, I didn't get a max ammo, so I instead pack a punched my pistol to get dead wire. I still had five shots in my thunder gun and an alchemical, but I just wanted to be safe than sorry. So if I did run out of ammo, I did have the dead wire pistol. In this situation here, I do find myself in a bit of a pickle. I only have three shots, and remember, if I go down, I lose. And if I get stuck up here, game over. So I have one shot left. I do have three Gershers, but I decided not to use them because I think by the time I used them, I probably would have downed. So I just need to train myself out of this position, and I do, which was awesome. Awesome, but a bit too close for my liking. On this map, there's plenty of spots that have large areas where you can train. I chose this position because the spawns are pretty fast and it's just very, very safe. And so I use my Deadwire pistol just to get a max ammo back just from going back and forth around these zombies. This is why this map is so easy. If you really want to get to round 100 and you aren't very good at the game, literally just do this. Just run around in a circle. And this is the end of the round though. So round 96. At the start of this round, I do get an alchemical antithesis, but I still want to get a max ammo because after a while, I feel like one's just coming. And sure enough, I did get a max ammo after like two more minutes of training these zombies. And then boom. Round 100 on Ascension, borderline as easy as a Cold War Zombies map. And you can see here, I have 24,000 kills. On Knockdown Tone, I had 30,000. So that shows that you need 6,000 more kills when there are no dog or monkey rounds. Some people really hate the monkey rounds, but to me, they speed up the rounds a lot and I don't have to kill 6,000 extra zombies. Moving on to Shangri-La now, and I have a massive soft spot for this map. I didn't actually play the original. Back when I played Black Ops 1, I was too young to realize there was even DLC on the game. But this map, after playing it on the Chronicles version, is so unique. And I think that's, that's partly because of the Wonder Weapon is so unique as well. And just like the other maps, I'm going to go over the setup really fast. I grab the RK5 and I grab a Gobble Gum. At the start of round 4, I leave the first room and go through the trap tiles and make my way to the power. I get the power on and then start gathering points. I get a red screen at round four and the way I see it is one less red screen in the higher rounds So it's kind of like I'm getting the red screens out of the way or at least that's what I tell myself I grab stamina up at round five and I run back to spawn to see if the floor has surfaced and it has So I just have to stand on that to unlock the pack a punch I grab juggernog and using a monkey I try and get a double points and I do succeed I love these monkeys on this map because they give you perks and insta kills whenever you want like they're super overpowered One of the things I switch up in this setup is I grab the bowie knife and and this is mainly because the wonder weapon on this map, the baby gun, is super rare. And also, I don't grab double tap on this map. So by having the bowie knife, I can get a lot of points really early. So then I can maximize the amount of hits of the mystery box before it gets into the higher rounds. Because if you don't have double tap and you don't have the wonder weapon, you're going to go down. So I'm trying to maximize the amount of points so I can hit the box at the low rounds. At round seven, I grab the Kudo. And you can see I've gone for an all purple fit. I've got the purple bowie, the purple RK5, and the purple Kudo. From round 10 plus, the bowie knife is no longer a one knife kill so i shoot a little bit before i knife and you can see i have 35,000 points by round 12 so if you guys do want a point whore this is a good little strategy you can do and it's super safe as well at round 12 i leave the last zombie alive and start hitting the mystery box and i get the baby gun after two hits the baby gun's weird it will either take 150 hits of the mystery box or it would be first or second go. It's a really bizarre how it works like that. On my way to pack a punch, I grab speed cola and also quick revive. I stand on the surface floor and now there's stairs out of the little hill that was there. I first pack a punch the baby gun. Now you only have a limited time to get the ammo mod you want. So I want dead wire. I get it, which was really lucky. Otherwise it would have turned back into a hill and then the 
the stone could have gone. I don't know. Can the stone move, guys? I swear it never moved, but one time it did move. So I might be tripping. So let me know in the comments, can the surface stone move once you've used it? So for the early round strategy, I don't open the door right behind me here. And I just spam the baby gun, really. And it's actually crazy on this map how many death machines and insta kills you get. And I don't know if it's a placebo because I was just going through these rounds ridiculously fast. I just felt like I was getting an insta kill every five seconds and also a death machine. And whenever there's a monkey that came down, I would just turn it into an insta-kill or a death machine as well. So really, I didn't use my baby gun that much. I was just flying through these rounds using the death machine and the insta-kill, which is kind of bizarre. When I didn't have these power-ups to abuse, I would just use the baby gun, like I said. And because I'd never used it before, this might be my new favorite wonder weapon, to be honest. And I heard on Black Ops 1, it feels smooth as butter. <laughs> On this version, it does feel a bit clunky when you go through the baby zombies. But nonetheless, it's just such an awesome wonder weapon. And I just spam the crap out of it. But I, I make sure I don't get hit by any normal zombies anywhere. I did fail a few times on Shang. I heard a lot of people saying Shang's really hard. I don't really think so. Uh, not the Black Ops 3 version anyway. I didn't think the Shang was that hard. But I've seen a lot of other YouTubers say <laughs> really struggling with the map. In the higher rounds, the insta-kills and the death machines get a lot less frequent, of course. Because there's less power-ups. Because it takes longer to go through each round but at this stage i only had two shots in my baby gun so i had to use an alchemical antithesis and this is the only map where when you have an alchemical antithesis you have to still play completely normal because with this map you can go down if you get hit by baby zombies too much because the baby zombies are still hitting you so if you spam the baby gun with alchemical antithesis and never have a break from being hit by the baby zombies you will go down so you need to have like one second breaks from killing the zombies here and there when i mentioned that the monkeys were overpowered some people were probably like oh no they're annoying they piss me off but right here is a good example i get a free insta kill and an insta kill you can pretty much go through half around at round 70 just with the insta kill in this room because they do last a long time but if you get hit by a monkey so sometimes the monkeys will just go and hit you if you get hit by a monkey the monkey will cut down the power up time by a lot so you really got to watch out for those monkeys that just are there to hit you instead of going for power ups they're they're the annoying monkeys in my opinion so now i'm going to go over my high round strategy so i actually came up with this myself i don't know if anyone else else does this in the zombies community maybe they do the high round strategy videos that i watched for this map they weren't doing this and that's why i was struggling but then i started doing the strategy and i was like oh this is so easy and i saved so much baby gun ammo how the strategy works if you watch carefully it's very simple and i do the exact same thing every time so i always shoot my baby gun from this angle if there's some zombies left over i just switch to my cuda and use deadwire i wait for the zombies coming from that left window i run down to this corner here then to the waterfall, I do one little like backward step in the waterfall, back to this position here, shoot the zombies with the baby gun, kill the remaining zombie with dead wire. Again, I wait for the zombies on my left coming out of that window, and then I try and make my way down to this corner. I can't because of the random spawn system on this map. I go through the waterfall, take my time to this corner, and then use two shots of the baby gun to finish off the round. I really, really enjoy this strategy, and it makes it maybe the most fun Chronicles map for me. This is the first map where I had to deal with the specialty zombies on Kino to turn the nova crawlers i didn't really have to deal with at all but on this map there were the fire zombies and the fast zombies i don't know what they're actually called and with the fire zombies you can just make them into a trap so i would wait until it's right next to the gobble gun machine make it explode and then just sit in this position here there is a glitch where sometimes zombies get stuck at that window here but now i can just wait just in front of the waterfall because i didn't know this but the waterfall actually shoots up if you go into it i didn't know that for the longest amount of time it's actually such a good escape so i quickly just want to go over the game before i got round 100 i crashed on round 94 and it was already midnight by the time i crashed and i was so pissed off that i restarted my pc it got straight into a new game which i don't normally do and it finished at 5 a.m so i completely ruined my next day but hey at least i did get to round 100 and this is just the last horde of zombies here i really 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 like this map i want to go I, right after editing i might just start playing the black ops 1 version and getting into that because i do have it downloaded but let me know what you guys think of shang i think some people don't like it i don't know what people's opinions are are on Shang. I think most people know it is a good looking map. And I, I'm sure if I play the Black Ops 1 version, I'll make it to round 20 because it's probably really hard. But yeah, round 100 on Shang, we got 30,000 kills, the same amount that we got on Noct. Now, I forgot to give Ascension and also Shang a word. I gave Noct slow, Varukt, hard, Sheen Numa, restart. And just before anyone calls me out, restart, in my opinion, is harder than hard. How can you ever get to round 100 if you're continually restarting? Kino, classic. Ascension, I'm gonna say easy. And Shang, I'm gonna say unique. 
which leads us to the map on the moon. Well, we start on Earth, and it's really important what we get off the rip here. Otherwise, I would have restarted. I got Juggernog, but I do want to say this is another map that I wish I played when I was younger, but I never did. I've seen a few people saying it's the worst, best map. I see a lot of people saying it's bad. I see a lot of people saying it's good. What do you guys think in the comments? Do you guys like moon? I'm genuinely interested to know. I think it's a really fun map. I don't know why people wouldn't like it. Maybe the Black Ops 1 version was a lot harder. I will play that as well soon. After grabbing Jug, I then teleport to the moon and grab the PES mask. Before you turn on the power, you always need to have this mask on to breathe on the moon. But once you have the power on, then you can breathe in certain areas of the facility. And just like most other Chronicles maps, I grab the RK5, get some points, and then make my way to the power. This might be slightly controversial, but I think this map has a really nice layout. It flows really nicely, and it's the type of map where you actually have to think what you're doing. My favorite maps are the maps that always constantly keep you engaged. On the way to power, I do grab the Cuda, hit the switch for the power, and then make my way into this room. Now, this room is going to be where we're going to be camping the entire game. The spawns are ridiculously fast, and if you start this round in this room, no zombies will come from the door behind you. They will just come from this window, and they will jump down from the pipe system just in front of you. After camping here until round 9, I then have enough points to go and and find the hacker because i'd never played moon before prior to this i had to learn how the hacker worked and all of the spawn locations and things like that and if you have played moon before which i'm assuming most of you guys have you will know that the hacker is so important because without the hacker you won't be able to breathe unless you have the pes at round nine i take the portal on the moon to take me back to earth i can now pack a punch my cuda and also get speed caller I teleport straight back to the moon and there is a zombie astronaut and because it's round nine I can just use my pack a punch cooter to kill him and I defuse the crane from drilling I don't know what actually happens in this map but pretty much there's like a drill if you don't defuse it after a while it will break the airway in one of the passages and then in those sections of the facility you'll have to wear the PES mask and you'll see later on why this is so bad so I always make sure I defuse them I grab stamina up and all through the chronicles I've pretty much every game ran with juggernaut stamina up speed caller and quick revive with very slight alterations here and there but it seems these four perks are the meta for the most part now going all the way back to knocked i said that the wonder weapons have a different rate that they come out of the box on each map verrucked was by far the easiest map to get a wonder weapon where moon was by far the worst it would take me literally 150 hits and i probably wouldn't even get the wave gun but for this game the curse was broken and i got the wave gun at round 15. i went back to earth pack a punch the cuda to get dead wire and also pack a punch the wave gun i said the baby gun was my new favorite wonder weapon this might be number two now i like it slightly better than the apothecan servant and i'm sure that on my black ops 3 video where i got to round 100 and all the black ops 3 maps i said the apothecan servant was always my favorite wonder weapon well now it's switched up by playing chronicles i have two new favorite wonder weapons weapons and really that shows just i'm kind of a noob to zombies i played a lot of zombies i just never played the dlc when i was younger i would say out of all the games black ops 1 is probably my least play zombies game that's the one game where i really haven't played much dlc which i feel is kind of a pity because i know so many of you guys really love black ops 1 zombies and it's your favorite game but if you were to ask a hundred different people who play zombies what's their favorite zombies game i think there's a lot of separation some of you guys might even hate black ops 1 but I will probably be making a video on Black Ops 1 soon, so that's why I bring that up. On this map, it's not only the wave gun that's super rare. The Gersh device, I get it at round 31 here. I don't know how many times I hit the mystery box to get it, but round 31 is kind of absurd to finally be set up. What you'll find on this map is you run out of wave gun ammo really fast, so that's why I did get the Gershes to make sure I can get some power-ups and then I can hack them. Here I do get a max ammo. And I finish the round, and so whenever I'm running around the map, I always have my cooter out with the dead wire. That's why I got it. <laughs> just in case those zombie astronauts are anywhere because they're a pain in the ass. But they are very easy to get rid of if you just run around with the cooter in your hand at all times. The high round strategy on moon is the fastest strategy in all of Chronicles. And it's literally just stand here and shoot where I'm shooting right into that wall. The strategy itself... I would say anyone can do it. It's the, everything outside the strategy on Moon that makes it hard. For example, whenever you have to hack the drill and also when you run out of ammo, because you will run out of ammo with the wave gun. Like I said, you run out pretty fast. And then if you run out of Gersh's and you don't get a single power up, this is when you get into a tricky situation and you're gonna have to start using the dead wire on your CUDA. And so you have to train the zombies in this area and it can be really awkward. This is the hard part of the strategy. What I was doing before anyone could do, this part I find quite difficult, but you wait until you get a power up. Luckily I have an in-plane sight, so I use it and then I can hack the power up into a max 
max ammo. If you never played Moon, the hacker changes every power up into a max ammo. So you can get a max ammo every single round, which is going to make these rounds go very fast. Preferably use a Gersh device to get the power up and then use a second Gersh device to hack the max ammo. That way you can keep our chemical antithesis and not have to have in plain sight or something like that. Whenever the speakers announce the excavations going to happen, I always make my way this way. I bring out my wonder weapon at this stage. The zombie astronaut will never be here and you can see right there I nearly just went down. I make my way all the way to this teleporter and go back to earth. This is by far the easiest way to hack the drill without going down because it is kind of difficult to hack the drill otherwise but if you do teleport from earth back to moon you have 15 seconds before zombies spawn in and you're right next to the machines that you need to hack. This makes hacking the drills way easier and I can understand that people say that the drills are really annoying whenever they go off especially at the early rounds because they go off so often but in the higher rounds I barely notice it and again for me I like being engaged in zombies I don't like just staring at a wall for an hour so I like it when things take me out of my comfort zone and make it a bit more difficult and just make me engage more that is my personal taste you guys might be completely different and at this moment this is where the zombie astronaut can be even more annoying when he comes in <laughs> and you're training because you ran out of full ammo I don't know how I actually got out of his grasp then this was kind of clutch and at this stage I have no ammo except for the Porter X2 Zap gun and I've honestly never used this thing before. I don't know how to use it. I think there's just a one-shot kill and I get stuck. These little gremlins just spawn on me. Look at them all. They spawned on me very aggressively there and now I just have to stay alive. So I go through into this massive chamber and this may be one of the easiest spots in the world to train and then i make it to the portal and go back to earth and i really need to get juggernaut here it is a 50 50 between speed collar and jug and i get speed collar first which is super rough but again no man's land's really easy to train and so then i teleport back to the moon i get quick revive and then i get stamina up this room's a little bit iffy so i had to use my dead wire with the cooter i got a power up so i use my gersh device so then i can turn the power up into a max ammo i don't have jug which is so weird getting jug last but that's just how this map works sometimes here i float up in the air on accident that can kill you especially i didn't have jug so if i didn't land on the platform i could have died i then make my way onto the portal go back to earth i don't know if you can get speed caller twice if you already got speed caller the first time i don't know how it works but i did get jug luckily and now i'm fully back up so i said that shino numa was super easy to get perks moon is very <laughs> awkward and rng based with the spawns being so fast on this map it can lead to some pretty bizarre red screens like this one here i didn't think the zombies could even hit me from that distance but they could and this red screen's even weirder the zombies were hitting me from inside of the pipes i think because <laughs> the zombies spawn above you or maybe they were falling on me i don't know because they weren't actually there anyway but boom I hit round 100, so that's seven maps out of eight, and the word I described this map was fast. And here, I just went for like a cool cinematic moment, because this map may be the coolest looking map. When you really comprehend that you're playing on the moon, it's pretty crazy. But I did get 31,000, nearly 32,000 kills on this map, which is kind of odd to me. I'm not sure why I got more kills than on Noct and on Ascension, but whatever so on to the big daddy of zombies origins everyone loves origins and here's my worst down ever yeah i failed at round 80 because i got stepped on origins is the first map and the last map of the chronicles where things get a lot harder to set up the process of getting everything you need to get to round 100 takes a while and i'm sure most of you guys know how to set up on this map so i'm gonna really skim through it just like i have with a lot of these other maps i open this first room door and then turn on the second generator i grab my first right shield part i knife the zombies to maximize points and grab my ice disc the map then starts snowing so i start digging holes i get one two, three, four bonus points. I grab my second shield part from the fire tunnel. I turn on my third generator. I've used all of the dig holes from generator two and generator three. So I end the round so more dig holes spawn. I then finally get my first ice part. I open the door to the main area of the map. Grab my third and final shield part. Got my second ice staff part. God, there are a lot of steps on this map. I then open the door to the sixth generator and I get this weird glitch where you can see my whole body just disassemble itself. But luckily I didn't die and grab my third and final ice part. I grab the STG, which for some reason I feel like is stronger on this map than every other map and then turn on generator six. I grab the fire disc, turn on generator five and get stamina. I turn on generator four and grab jug. 
With the Panzer round coming up at round 8, I get a Haymaker from the dig site and keep it. This is the first map on Chronicles to have a shield, and so I build it and put it on. I killed the Panzer at round 8, and I think if I didn't get that Haymaker from the dig site, I probably would have died from him. He's definitely overpowered at times. I pack a punch the STG. I like to get it nice and early at round 9. Through the ice tunnel, I go to the crazy place and grab the ice crystal and then build the ice staff. I complete the ice puzzle and then shoot the three ice tombstones. And then voila, finally we have the ice staff fully upgraded. And this thing, of course, if used correctly, is very good. I get speed cola and also repack a punch my STG to get turned. In doing so, I do the challenge where I spend 30,000 points. This allows me to get double tap whenever I want. So I grab quick revive first and then double tap second. That way, I I get five perks instead of four and by round 15 we're completely set up and for this map i don't have to do anything except for sit in this tunnel the entire game and rotate the gobble gums i do trade out the stg later on for the cuda and get turned on the cuda because the cuda wall buy is closer but that's it i went from round 27 to 34 to 42 by just shooting my ice staff at the exact same rock at round 56 you can see i'm doing the same thing but this time there's just a panzer there and the panzer will just die now i don't normally do this if i'm just going for round 100 i usually just leave the generators but this time i decided okay i'll get a max ammo i'm not really sure why i decided this but i nearly went down cause of it and so that's usually why i just don't bother with the generators max ammo is not that important on this map but if you were to go down it would be because of the panzer and the timing of your ice staff shot so i usually just spam it right in its path i did actually go down once because of the panzer in a situation like this sometimes he just runs straight through because he's an absolute beast although you could describe the high round strategy for this map is just shooting up against a rock with the ice staff i will go into a bit more depth for you guys so i did use the ice staff and then i would use turned with my cuda just to speed up the rounds probably the most fun i had on this map was whenever i got an insta kill or a death machine you can kill hundreds of zombies before they even spawn into the map and it's just incredibly satisfying and so i'll kind of just let this play for you guys just for a bit of fun we're right at the end of the video if you guys have watched this far you guys are honestly massive legends and i do appreciate it the next video will probably be round 100 on every black ops 2 map but we'll see i do want to do black ops 4 as well because i never really played that zombies game and the last time i got round 100 on it i wasn't that positive on the game and i got a lot of comments being like yo you're a mad hater people really like black ops 4 it seems and i feel like if people like something usually there's value to it in some way so i'm down to give black ops 4 another try and go into it a bit more optimistic because i i think because i think i was a bit too harsh on the game and i'm sorry that i've kind of skimmed over origins here i've gone over it really fast because it is quite repetitive so i don't want to show you guys the same thing it literally is just using the eye staff and using the cuda that's all i did this whole game but boom for the last time we hit round 108 maps knocked let me see if i can do this just off the top of my head knocked Farakt, sheena numa kino de Toten, ascension shangri-la moon and origins so i hope you guys did enjoy this video i really did enjoy putting it together so yeah thanks for watching